Good afternoon, and welcome to the Holy Mass at St. Gregory the Great. I'm Joe Deck, and I will be the lector for this Mass. Our celebrant is Father Rob, assisted by Deacon Michael. Attention Eucharistic ministers, the November schedule has been sent out via email. If you do not have an email address, copies are available in the sacristy. Please pick one up after Mass today. Please read the bulletin for important information on our school open house, upcoming pancake breakfasts, All Saints and All Souls Day Masses, the Great Dinner Auction, and much more. The readings for today's liturgy, liturgy are located at 1280 in the Gather Book. 1280. And now please stand and welcome those around you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. We gather together as God's people to reflect his goodness to our world. Let's take a moment now to look deep inside to those areas that still need to be conformed into his likeness, and let's ask for forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are the wisdom of God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you shine God's glory across creation. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again to draw us into the peace of everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Oh, 
Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world. at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and to serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, Cyrus, whose right hand I grasp, subduing nations before him and making kings run in his service, opening doors before him and leaving the gates unbarred. For the sake of Jacob, my servant of Israel, my chosen one, I have called you by your name giving you a title, though you knew me not. I am the Lord, and there is no other. There is no God besides me. It is I who arm you, though you know me not, so that toward the rising and the setting of the sun, people may know that there is no one besides me. I am the Lord, there is no other. The word of the Lord. Thanks. his wonders among all the peoples. Give the Lord glory and honor. For the Lord is great and highly to be praised, to be feared above all gods. For the gods of nations are not It was the Lord who made the heavens. Give the Lord glory and honor. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and power. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Bring an offering and enter his courts. Give the Lord glory and honor. 
worship the Lord in holy splendor. O oh, tremble before him all the earth. Say to the nations, the Lord is king. He will judge the peoples in fairness. Give the Lord glory and honor. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the Church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all of you, remembering you in our prayers, unceasingly calling to mind your work of faith and labor of love and endurance in hope of our Lord Jesus Christ before our God and Father knowing, brothers and sisters loved by God, how you were chosen. For our gospel did not come to you in word alone, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with much conviction. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. The Pharisees went off and plotted how they might entrap Jesus in speech. They sent their disciples to him with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are a truthful man and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. And you are not concerned with anyone's opinion, for you do not regard a person's status. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar or not? Knowing their malice, Jesus said, Why are you testing me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin that pays the census tax. Then they handed him the Roman coin. Jesus said to them, Whose image is this and whose inscription? They replied, Caesar's. At that, Jesus said to them, Then repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise If you're old enough, you will remember that in, in the 1990s, there was a television campaign for Canon cameras. And it was featuring a very young Andre Argas. And he was this brash, young tennis pro, sporting long hair. He had a headband and he was ready to take on the world. He was flashy. He was a media star, a great tennis player. 
He was hot happening, and he was an icon of cool. And at the end of the commercial, he looks right into the camera, into your soul, and he simply says, image is everything. It seems like when we were teenagers back then, sure, we were alone and we spent our time inspecting our image, gazing into that mirror and creating the face we wanted the world to see. We practiced how to smile, how to frown, how to smirk seeing what we would look like having spiked hair or getting our hair just so. In our middle ages, we gazed into that mirror to wonder how we could project confidence so that we could work in the business world and then later on in life, we would gaze into that mirror once again to wonder where those lines on our face came from or where that hair is going. Image is indeed everything. At first, we might blush and think that this was vain and shallow, but we must value something about images. We have lots of images. We have them on our cell phones, on our cameras, and we capture, we post, we share, we print dozens of images. And yet we can review our lives by a series of those images that are stuffed into albums, boxes, desk drawers, cases, and hundreds of other places that we set aside those pictures. They began with black and white. And then we were amazed with Polaroid, and there it was and then colored, and now digital. My dear friends, images of a lifetime. Images tell us a story, the story of our lives. And they whisper to us, remember what you looked like, what you've been, what you are, and what you are becoming. An image is everything. At least it can tell us our story. If we listen to the whispers, if we take those reflections of the mirror and go through those photos of where we have been, so we can understand where Caesar comes today, into today's gospel. Jesus is trying to be tricked by the Pharisees. And either which way he answers, he's going to create enemies. And so Jesus says, show me the coin that pays the tax. And they hand him a Roman coin and he says to them, whose image is this and whose inscription? And they reply, Caesar, the Roman emperor, who looked into that mirror and wanted to see a reflection of power, stability, and prosperity. And he wanted that image to be on every coin, that each Roman coin could tell a story. Pax of Roma, the peace of Rome. And the emperor wanted everyone to obey him, 
because he was king and they belong to him. And so today Jesus says, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and give to God what belongs to God. So we have to ask ourselves that question, what belongs to God? And surprisingly enough, Jesus is trying to answer that question of the Pharisees by telling them that image is important. If we look at that coin, we could be seduced to believe Caesar. But if we look into the mirror of our life and only see our own face staring back, we can be deceived. There was a sage that says, read the newspaper in one hand and the gospel in the other. We could use a parable wisdom for today. It's to glance into those images of our lives while holding the gospel in the other hand. We need to take St. Paul's suggestion from our second reading today and peer into the gospel that comes with power and the Holy Spirit. We need to look at that image of Isaiah would we have considered and remembered when we peered into that mirror that we know. First of all, we're created in the image of the one who chose us, loves us, and calls us by name. We are called in that image of the one who anoints us and gives us a title. We're created in that image of the one who unbars the gates, opens the doors, and grasps us by the hand. We're created by that image who's always with us and loves us so much that he became one of us. In the exchange with the leaders of Jerusalem, Jesus isn't asking us, how much do we owe? He's asking us to remember, to remember who we are and in whose likeness we were created. We are people that need to look into that mirror of our lives in the mirror of today, in the mirror of the gospel, and to see ourselves as that image of Christ, an image we are called to reflect in our world today. To be people of the world that if Christianity was a crime, we would surely be charged and convicted because each of us are a reflection of his goodness. And when people see us, come to know us, they should be able to see the face of God in each of us. Like that tennis star today at the end of the commercial, it's Jesus who looks into our souls and simply says, image is everything. May we reflect his goodness. Let us together profess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
he descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, and from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Lord our God, we come now and we open up our hearts as we place our prayers before you. For Pope Francis and Bishop Michael Fisher, may they continue to encourage the faithful to nourish their faith and grow in their love of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all world leaders, may they defend true justice and the common good to shape our world according to God's wisdom and order. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. On this World Mission Day, may we renew the joy of the gospel in all Christian communities and have the awareness of our responsibility to proclaim it. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people of war-torn countries, especially Ukraine, Palestine, and Israel, may they receive our love and prayers as they struggle for peace in their countries. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For members of the Synod meeting this month in Rome, May their discussions be led by the Holy Spirit so that final decisions may allow all of us to walk in faith and become a more vibrant church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish community, may we receive the grace this week to offer to God all that belongs to him, our thoughts, words, and actions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intention of this Mass, for whom we pray, pray in a special way, Mary Jo Perna, and for our own prayers and intentions, which we offer now in prayerful silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died in faith, May they be granted the rewards and blessings of the kingdom, especially those who have passed on this week from our parish and faith community. Theodore Sosnowski, Charles Sina, Isabella Wolf, Brenda Sheehan, William Harold, and Helen Leisner. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, our God, strengthen us that we may reflect your goodness to those around us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our ushers will now take up the collections. The second collection today is for World Mission Sunday. And at the proper time, our gifts will be brought forward by the Green family.
Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying actions of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and you arranged the changing of the times and the seasons. You formed us in your own image and you set humanity over the whole world and its wonder to rule in your name over all that you have made and forever to praise you in mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so now, with the angels we praise you, and in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who loves the human race and who always walks with us on this journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present here in our midst. And when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples and now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask you to send forth your Holy Spirit to make holy these gifts of bread and wine so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread. He gave you thanks, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and he said, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once again, giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, take this, all of you drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant that will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of 
Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the works of your love till he comes again, and we offer to you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking in these mysteries, Almighty Father, give us life through your Spirit and grant that we may be conformed into the image of your Son. Confirm us in the bonds of communion, that together with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, and with all other bishops, priests, deacons, religious, and your entire people, Grant that the faithful of the Church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the Gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief, their pain, their joy, and their hope, we may faithfully bring the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way to your kingdom. Remember all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith alone you have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us that when our earthly pilgrimage is done, we may come to that eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles, your martyrs, St. Gregory, St. Pius, and all of your saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. It's at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching that we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy 
we may be always freed from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. God bless you. My friends, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those that are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that benefiting from participation in these heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give us in this present age and prepare us for the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a few announcements before we leave. Next week, there will be a prayer event for world peace. A rosary will be offered next Sunday at St. Pius at 10 o'clock. Please see the bulletin for further details. Also, make sure you read the bulletin for a sneak peek at the upcoming Christmas craft show. There are some photos of items that will be at the show. And we're on our way looking for volunteers to help place yard signs, deliver flyers, and set up our crafty wonderland. Thank you for your support. Raffle tickets will be sold after Mass in the vestibule. Have a wonderful day. The sun's out. Praise be Jesus. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless us. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth glorifying the Lord by your life. Our prayer for renewal. In every age, O oh God, you have called us to be your people, to be your church. In this time, we begin anew to discern the pathways that will lead us, your people, closer to you. Continually bless our journey as we proclaim your good news, celebrate your saving presence among us, serve others with charity and justice, and steward the world you have entrusted to our care. Send your spirit to lead and to guide our Emmaus journey as we commit ourselves to the renewal of our church. And this we ask through Christ our Lord.